plastic waste. Sometimes, depending on where they enter the water, it takes 10 years to reach their first gyre. Years during which they will decay. Therefore, the immense majority of pieces of plastic found are smaller than five millimeters and are known as microplastics. And far from what is usually assumed, these zones look nothing like the plastic continents that are often talked about. In this room where we're sitting on now, if this would be the garbage patch, we would maybe have 30 or 40 tiny, tiny pieces of plastic. The garbage patches are a very thin soup of very small pieces of plastic. They are not islands of trash, they are not continents, nothing like that. These microplastics have drawn the attention of many scientists. They are at the heart of the problem because they are much more numerous than macroplastics and their ability to enter the environment seems infinite. And what we're doing is trying to understand how different types of plastic materials break down in the marine environment. So they're in the ocean exposed to sunlight and the turbulence of waves and currents, and they somehow have gone from a large item to microplastics. And we don't know how long that takes, and we don't know how different that is for certain types of plastic versus other types of plastic. So we know that two common plastics float in seawater. Those are polyethylene and polypropylene. Polyethylene is used to make things like milk jugs or plastic bags. Polypropylene is used for things like bottle caps, straws, and dairy containers. So these are products that we use every day. Kara Lavender Law looks at how pieces of polyethylene and polypropylene fragment and which are more resistant or more fragile. The plastic splits into such small pieces that they go through the mesh of the nets used by the scientists to take their samples. Even though these holes are just a third of a millimeter wide. This decay explains in part our difficulty to find the missing plastic.